that warp in there, but we use it to start and like end. Thundering. Yeah. yeah. Right on. And then our solar is the largest solar you can put onto a 200 amp service like this. And so it would provide probably about 30 to 40% of our electricity year round. 100% on a day like today. But we have a bunch of fridges and a bunch of stuff that uses electricity. So we use quite a bit. Can you store much of the I don't. Car? I don't no. store anything. No? It's connected to the grid, and okay. so you get to use the grid as kind of a backup. Anything right. in excess goes back there, and then you get to take it back for free. Mm -hmm. so it's a good trade. It works well. Froggies, fishies? Frogs. There's two ducks. Uh -huh. They're usually sitting around maybe in the shade right now. And I, there's like little fish in there. I did stock it with fish at one point. The pond was really unhealthy when I moved here. It was like mm -hmm. anaerobic and stale. And, mm. um, so it's coming back to life. I don't know if those first fish have Five years? Back. What were you doing before that? Uh, I worked in the financial industry in Calgary before that. I did the suit and tie thing for really? a decade before. And then, yeah, I wanted to try something else. I'd never grown anything in my life. And what? I was like grown in the city. And so Salt Spring Island was like the best climate from what I could research. And there was other farms and... Um, I never really set to create community. It was more, I knew I'd need a little bit of help in the garden. So we got a couple people that first year and then some people liked it. And so they stayed and then we had more help. So we built more spaces and then more people could stay. And it just kind of like, and then we had to realize like, yeah, how is it? What's the social permaculture essentially of the land? Like how do we live together harmoniously? And um, yeah, what are our shared community practices are kind of the essence of the community. And like we can all live together in like an apartment building but if we don't actually do anything together, it's still misses that anchor. And so here we have a lot of shared practice and it grows more every year, but we start the day with the meditation in a circle. We eat breakfast together, we eat lunch together, we eat dinner together. Um, some people work off the farm so they don't come to all the, and then on Monday nights we have a sharing circle, Tuesday nights we have a women's circle. Um, and then we often do other things during the week, like we'll do a movie that matters or something like that. And, um, we do a book study a little bit. We take a lot of wisdom from a community in Portugal called Tamara. Yeah. And uh, so we study, they've been around for 40 years, some Germans doing amazing things in Portugal. And we, uh, yeah, we study some of the books that they've written, the research that they found through their living research experiment. And so on some level, this is just a living research experiment. How do we live in a different way? Um, and the reason is, is we uh, want to lead a new peace movement, mm -hmm. a peace revolution, as you see at the front gate. So mm -hmm. that's, that's, the, that's the star that we're pointing at, and Tamara points at the same star. Mm -hmm. um, but we're on very different land with very different pieces to it. So we're learning our own thing, and mm -hmm. learning what grows well, mm -hmm. in the human and the physical mm -hmm. garden world. Mm -hmm. Is that where the forum style of form comes from the Zeg Circling? Institute in Germany yeah. Yeah. and the and Tamara was a, a, some of the people from Zeg founded Tamara so its origins come we take it from Tamara mm -hmm. um, but yeah its origins come from the Zeg Institute in Germany and like can you kind of give us like a bite size like what it does for people um, what forum does is allows us to one what would happen if we healed the universal wound of feeling unseen? Mm. And two, an ability to recognize that our wounds, whatever we, that burdens us, this sack, that when we're able to like throw it in the circle and share it, we realize that beneath the stories that we all have the same wounds. You could step in and share your deepest, darkest, and I could guess within probably six things what it is. The fear of abandonment, fear of rejection or judgment or lack of unable to find your creative center what do I do with my life mm. these things are like the currents that yeah. are like underneath everyone and so when we're able to step in and explore it from another perspective it's a, a gestalt based practice mm -hmm. so we often explore things from a different perspective mm -hmm. one we're able to see other aspects of ourselves. so the format is someone steps in and shares and I often facilitate it to allow them to share it in a, another perspective. So from your mother's perspective or swap roles or look in the mirror and right. say it to yourself. Yeah. And then the circle will open for mirrors and that's an opportunity for anyone else to step in and from a third person's perspective, say what it is they saw. Mm -hmm. I see 
three people who have come with a curiosity to see what Aloha is about. And it becomes very depersonalized in that way. Mm -hmm. And it offers us an opportunity to see unseen aspects of ourselves. If we're going to be really raw and real and we explore from another perspective, when you don't get caught in our story, there's an opportunity to see our shadow mm -hmm. um, in a way that's non-personalized. And mm -hmm. we get to take those mirrors and we can cast them aside and say that they're totally wrong or we can allow it to like mm -hmm. really hit us in the heart and um, that's mm -hmm. our personal growth so mm -hmm. that's kind of what form is we deprivatize mm -hmm. our world is built on like this uh, there's we live in a culture where lies and deceit almost have an evolutionary advantage mm -hmm. we like lie to our boss or our partner we present the best version mm -hmm. of ourselves yeah. that's our strength and um, there's so much private in the realm of love and sexuality and in finance we don't even we don't it's inappropriate to ask someone how much money they make or mm -hmm. everything is privatized and when we deprivatize things um, then we can really see, start to see each other as humans and these lies and defeat they see no longer have the evolutionary advantage it's actually raw raw vulnerability and realness have the evolutionary advantage so that's the essence of the practice and mm -hmm. part of wow. the vision here mm -hmm. awesome yeah Great. beautiful <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah.